This is Stockholm. I'm sitting on the on the side of the sea here. Of course, in Stockholm, the sea comes really inland, and lots of people live on the sea. This is river, actually, that goes into the sea. We have been visiting the uh, cancer registry here to see if we can get some data to look into the effects of uh, the cesium-137 in, in the water on the people who live close to the sea. But you will recall recently I was talking to you about the foundation, Christopher Busby Foundation for the Children of Fukushima. Now the Japanese government have been spending a lot of time measuring cesium-137 using whole body monitors, whole body counters in the children. About 3,500 people have been um, scanned so far. And these, this will be a database for the concentration of cesium-137 in their, in their bodies. And the reason I believe that this is happening is that they are covering their back against any later court cases. Because when these people eventually develop diseases like cancer and leukemia, they will want to take TEPCO to court, or they will want to take the Japanese government to court. And then, in order to do that, of course, they'll have to have evidence that there was a problem. And I talked to you yesterday about the evidence being um, covered up because, of course, the, the cesium-137 is now being trucked all over Japan, so there'll be no proper control group. But the other problem, of course, is this, that they will be able to come into court with this whole body monitoring data and say, look, the levels of cesium, the levels of radioactivity were really low. It couldn't possibly cause these levels of cancer. And they will use this data in court, and that's what I believe they're collecting the data for. So it's most important that we get independent data, that somebody goes in there and gets data which will possibly be used in court later to back up the assertion that there is a problem. One of the problems, of course, is that the whole body monitoring only measures gamma radiation from cesium. So you don't see the plutonium, the uranium, the tritium, the strontium-90, the barium-140, the carbon-14, all of the other stuff which are beta emitters which don't register on these systems. But of course you can detect by doing urine tests and tests for hair, which we will be offering as part of the foundation laboratory work. So that's my message uh, is, uh, today, is to, is to consider very much taking some samples, like hair samples, cutting them, putting them in a plastic bag and just keeping them in the fridge. Because if it turns out there's a problem later on and you want to go into court, you won't have any evidence that there was a problem. And it would be mark it up. with a date. Yes, that's right. Plastic Ziploc bag with a lock of hair in there, as much hair as you can afford to put in there, Write the date on it, seal it up, put your name and your location.